Hello students, I am Mrs. C.K. Chuku Grace, a biology teacher. Today we are going to be studying classification of living things. The topic is classification of living things. It is an SS1 topic, but for SS2 and 3, it will be revision, especially SS3 that is preparing for WAEC examination. Classification is a topic that comes out almost every year. So we want to go through it to refresh their memory on it. In classification, there is hierarchy. That means there is the largest group and there is the lowest group. We have the kingdom, which covers the rest of the group, where you don't want to mention the rest. But if you, go, if you want to go further to break the group into smaller groups, you come into phylum, and you want to break the phylum further, to a smaller group, you have class, order, family, then you get to genus and species. The classification into genus and species is like the first name and the surname. When you give the genus of an organism, and the species name. That is very specific. Once you mention that, every biologist knows the organism you are talking about. There will be no confusion anywhere in the world. So we have the hierarchy of classification and going by this, the kingdom is the largest group. Sometimes you are asked which of these embraces the rest and you have all these lined up as options. In that question, if you mention kingdom, you have covered the rest. And some other times you are asked, which of the group represents the one that are closely related and can interbreed? At that level, you come down to the lowest, which is species. That one is more specific. Then, we move down to classification, uh, to explaining the kingdom. The kingdom, as we said, is a very large group and encompasses a large number of organisms, such as the Monera. Example of that group uh, in Monera is bacteria. These ones are known as prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. That means they don't have definite nucleus. The ones grouped in the kingdom Monera don't have definite nucleus. A good example from there is the bacteria. The next is the protista. The protista has definite nucleus. And many of the unicellular organisms, those organisms that have one cell, belong to this group. An example is the amoeba. The next one is the fungi, the kingdom fungi. These ones include the plants that don't have chlorophyll. They cannot make food for themselves. 
So they depend on dead organic matter for their food. Example is the bread mold. If you keep your bread in a moist place and you don't take it within four days, you will see some colored things growing there. That's the mold. Any other food item you leave, you didn't warm it, and you leave it for some time, you will see the mold growing on it. Another example there too is the mushroom. You have the next kingdom, plantae. The plant group, starting from the lowest to the largest plants. Example is the mango. The next kingdom is the kingdom animalia. And of course, we know that there are so many animals in the world, including human beings. We move further in our classification of organisms. The system used by scientists all over the world is one we call binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature was introduced by a Swedish biologist named Carl Linnaeus. Carolinus. Carolinus introduced the double system of naming organisms and it was accepted by the scientists all over the world because it removed confusion. That means using the genus and the species name. Once you mention that it is a particular organism you have mentioned. As we can see here, the white star apple that we use, all of us, uh, some of us like it, uh, some feel it is too sour. The white star apple, the agbalumo or other as uh, people know it. It is called Chrysophyllum audidium. Chrysophyllum audidium. The cockroach that is common around us is known as Periplaneta Americana. You notice that the genus name starts with capital letter and the species name starts with small letter. When you have written the species name, when you have written in the, um, the binomial nomenclature, you must Underline the genus name separately and the species name separately. If you don't do that, you lose marks in exams. It's either you underline them or if you don't want to underline, you write them in italics. That means in slanting form. I will stop here for today. And I will give you the following, uh, the following assignments to try on your own. I'll give you the following assignments to try on your own. I want you to classify the following organisms. I purposely put 
filer and classes. Uh, for some time now, it has been coming out in WAEG this way. And it dismantles students. Once they see filer, they forget what they are asked to do. Filer is the plural form of phylum, which is the second level after kingdom. When you see phyla, it means you are asked to classify more than one organism. So in your own classification, you will not write phyla for one organism. You write phylum. They write a particular organism and the class of that organism. But if you will use tabular form, if you use tabular form, If you we use phyla in the tabular form, that means you will have the organisms, at least more than one organism in the column. But some students choose to take one organism after another. If you are taking one organism after another, you will not use phyla, you use phylum. I expect you do the assignment and we see how far we have gone in classification of living things. Thank you.